The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Hi everyone. <laughs> Excuse me, Basil Chapman here on this last trading day of the the month, March, and we're looking at the Dow. This is the 31st of March. We're looking at the Dow. This is I'm coming in late. 10:30 had some computer problem, well, program problem, and I was able to get it resolved. Well, and I'm back. So uh, thank you, uh, Tommy uh, Jr., for uh, that full-in uh, repeat show. Here we go. The Dow is trading right now. Let me just run these down because what I really want to do, because it's the end of the month, it's really important. I want to be able to do the show to say the Dow is in a buy mode. Uh, the buy mode essentially says that you've, uh, you are now in a position to make at least four higher peaks. Peak A is the first, peak B higher uh, high. Peak C is the next one. Peak D is the next one. Four higher peaks to fulfill the buy mode requisite. You can go higher than that, but the target is at least four, four higher peaks. Now what we're looking at, why is, uh-oh, I said it was resolved. I hope it's resolved. INDU. There it is. Okay. We're in strong legs. See above the 200-period exponential moving average up 171. We've been adding to the, to the long side of the Dow. Uh, for at least the past couple of weeks, taking profits and adding again. We're back. We did that Wednesday. We're still in that long position, three times long. The Dow, besides being the diamonds and the and the three times long earlier on from October. So here we are at 33,027. And the reason is that all the technicals that I was looking at seem to concur that that there is a bias right now that says upside action is needed to resolve this rectangle formation in the uh, Dow, the weekly chart that says you've got to get back into that that rectangle. That's normally what you do. You break down under it in the H pattern, then you get back in. Well, so far we're doing that, and I'll talk about the other things as we move along. So S&P, now this is going to be fascinating because the S&P is a little ahead. It's in leg D, but you remember we spoke about the Chapman Wave falling axe formation. That's a declining cone formation. From the 41.95-44 high in February, we made lower highs and much lower lows. And all of a sudden, you made the V-shaped formation, and the pattern said on balance volumes turned up, stochastics turned up, MACD's turning up, um, still very poor in the nine period moving average under the 14, but this is a start of a move up. And if it can break that Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone, it becomes a propellant zone. And you look at each left side high to say, is it, are, are you able to accomplish that? Because you should make a one to one to the upside. And I'm very conservative. I drew it from the low to the trend line resistance, and then I don't go from the trend line resistance up. You, you have to start moving up decisively before you can actually use that technique. But now it says that by the uh, 10th of April, it doesn't say it has to be on the 10th. It doesn't say it has to be after. It just says in this particular move in the Chapman Wave resolution of the falling axe formation, where it breaks above the upside, as it takes out, if it can take out each left side high, look, the left side high on the 6th of uh, March was four, uh, in the S&P was 4,078.49. Uh, and here we are at 4,074.42 days young. Is it able to break above that? I want to see that in leg D. That's really important. But then you can say over the coming days, it should tackle, and this is the one-to-one, -one, the conservative one-to-one -one is 4,094. But it also says the 200-period moving average of 4,002 is extremely strong support. Okay. And the weekly chart from that rectangle formation, we're in it. That's really important. And you can see that the uh, the MACD and stochastic and on balance volume are all very weak, and the 9 is still under the 14. A lot of work to be done to get that into a, 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 buy, a new uh, um, buy mode or buy signal. All right, let's go to the QQQ, because this has been showing some leadership here. It's up 0.62% today. The Dow's up 0.54. S&P's down up 057 
we're looking at up a dollar ninety-five at three seventeen point sixty-four in leg C, but breaking this cup formation, a close, three closes above this le the 313.38 high of February would be really important and say that you should still go higher to a leg D, because that's the requisite of the Chapman Wave uh, buy mode. Looking at um, the IWM, which has been lagging, 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 now it's a little bit of a leader on the day up 2.40 at 177.57. It has a long way to go to get to even the 50 period moving average of 180, up to, up to another two and a half points. I say a long way to go because it has been lagging. So it, it'll, it'll need to rejuvenate. But that weekly chart is not bad. Wait a minute. Why is this not? Oh, man. This is something new now. Let me do this. See if I can get that to work out. Oh. Green. So why didn't it move to the IWM? IWM in the weekly chart? Oh, have I got to do each one by hand? What? No, there. Okay. Oh, we're back. Okay, good. Now let's go to gold. Now this is really, really going to be a very important moment for a number of aspects. That includes the financials because gold so far has ex been, uh, in a sense, the go-to place for the financial crisis has been the go-to place because um, it's on its own. It's been doing very nicely. Yeah, it is GC. Oh, now this is not working. Man, I tell you, I, I, I'm sympathetic to when, uh, when Larry talks about his technical problems. I just, it drives me bonkers. Okay, gold is down two and a half at 1996. Stuck in this little rectangle formation. Now, what's really important about this is that if you look at the weekly chart, it's got a leg D with a long leg of doji candle, and there's a lower high so far. So if I, if I was doing just pure Chapman wave analysis and saying, forget about everything else, what are you looking at? I'm saying gold is stuck. It hasn't been able to use the last two and a half weeks, almost three weeks, to push to the upside and to break to a new recovery high. Yet it hasn't broken down. That weekly chart is that it's holding very well. All the technicals are pretty good. But look at silver. Now, silver is going higher. It's gone to a leg E in the daily chart. Am I going to have to do I now have to call them again? Oh, what can I say? I used to love Trade Station, but lately it's been driving me nuts. And I don't know if it's my my issue. It seems like it was their issue, actually. Uh, SI. Okay, so now the, the weekly and monthly are moving in sync. So look, the V-shaped pattern in the weekly chart of silver is really very good. Monthly charts improved a lot. The daily chart has got this left side high that was made at um, on the 2nd of February at 2488, uh, it's trying to tackle that as a 2412. So that means that the over the metals themselves, I'm talking about gold and silver, are forget about gold pulling back a little bit here yeah, and also not being able to break your new high. You remember they play cat and mouse so that when gold is rallying, silver sometimes stands still and looks around and says, hey, gold's going, I better catch up. And then gold starts, uh, silver starts to lead and gold says, you know, I, I'm kind of tired, I'm taking a break. And they both pull back. So it could be that we are really close to some kind of a consolidation in these metals, just in the short term. If you look at the XLF, the XLF, the financials, and I'm using this as a relationship, as a go-to place for safety, like insurance against gold. But if you look at the XLF, it's off the low, but it's really not doing much. I'll be back in a moment. Basil Chapman, this is Friday the 31st at 10.38 a.m. The Dow is up 157. We'll be right. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. 
the Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hello, so we're back. I just wanted to show you this. Uh, earlier on, when everything was working, I got this low at the bottom, and I thought, isn't it, you know, I like to talk about two click sessions. Sometimes it's a four click session where you can click early in the morning. Uh, I wasn't up at 4 a.m., but certainly at uh, 6 a.m. I was up well before a little before 6, and I was looking at this 10-minute. So I decided that I would treat this as a Chapman Wave phantom peak in the 10-minute chart right there because there were two uh, highs that were exactly the same. And because uh, the S&P futures trade in quarter points, uh, if it was in pennies, I wouldn't necessarily do that. But it's in quarter points. Uh, I said, I got a little blip in the uh, in the on-balance volume. I'm going to use that. I want to be ahead of the game. And lo and behold, that would have been A, B, C. And then that big spike at 8.30, whatever the news was, economic news, gave you that D. And then it pulled back. But look at this. From that crossover right there at uh, 5.10 this morning, and the S&P was between four, uh, let's call it in the 4080s. Even to this moment, you're now 20-something points above that at 4104. The nine-period moving average hasn't closed. Now, I would have thought that there would be a, a good rally. I was expecting in the Chapman Wave, let me see if I can, if I've still got this notation here. Yeah, in the, in the, in the 120 minute chart right here, there it is. So there, there's that move that I was expecting. And it, if it went through all these Chapman Wave automated resistance levels, or I show my subscribers to my opening call every day, there's a Dow Daily with just a few moving averages plus my notation. Yes, and uh, I'll put in whether we've added or not uh, to, the, to position, the position. This is with the Chapman Wave automated Chapman Wave resistance levels. Uh, green, uh, these green numbers here, and the cyan, light, light blue ones here are support levels. 120 minutes, and this one has MACD stochastic on balance volume as well, <clears throat> as well as the automated notations. This one has the automated notations, plus, uh, but I don't, I don't do anything else 
other than put the notation in, and then I, I'm typing here at 20, 120 minute chart at 32859, that was yesterday's close, with Chapman Wave support and resistance levels. And what we were looking at is, let me just go here to this. So obviously I'm going to run out of time today, but I really wanted to do a bunch of things. Uh, I, I got questions. One was about, um, oh, actually a number, but one was very important about Syntas, which I discussed yesterday. And I, I said that Syntas has acted so well. Oh, I bet I lost it because it got shut down. No, it's there. Okay, good. There's my Chemway uh, notations. So this went to a peak C. And it's gone to the D. And what I'd say to subscribers, I'm anticipating a spike above to get me to that D. And then we might pull back later in the day. And my thinking was, so that would be two, two clicks. One click for a move up. And then as was this 100, wrong chart. Oh, this is going to be terrible. Now I have to call them again. Oh, third time today. Let me just type this in here. That's not Syntas. I mean, that's not the Dow Industrials. There it is. Oh, yeah, I have to do it over again. So that was peak A, B, C, D, E. Pulls back, and this is peak A, B, C. And I said we should get to a D. And then we'll see if a little later in the day, because of the weekend, because of Monday coming up, whether or not there's some kind of a pullback. Well, lo and behold, here's the 200-period moving average. Look how fantastic that's been resistance. We're testing it once again. The MACD this time is holding before it turns around immediately with the stochastic. Remember, the stochastic above 80% is great. Above 90% is fabulous. About 95% is exact. It's just ideal. You can expect at some point it's going to start to come down. But up until then, that's fantastic action. Well, when it goes just for five or six bars and then goes back under 80%, watch out. You got yourself a sharp move down. So far, the stochastic looked like it was going to do that yesterday. And today, it's holding very nicely at 87%. So it would still be a, a two-click session with one click if I had done it. Thank goodness I didn't. I don't know what I would have done. Well, oh, no, no, it would have been on a different system. It would have been fine, but I wouldn't be able to monitor it as closely as I usually do. Um, so uh, in this particular instance, until I get a signal that says we're going to reverse, that would mean that you could hold one position, click to go uh, to take take it off. And at this particular point, um, there's no, and now I'm going to have a problem with this. Is that right? Yes. So let me do this. I got, I got to the gold. I got to the silver. I want to get now to the dollar, the DXY. Where's it going to show up? Is it going to show up now? It's on the 120 minute chart, and nothing. And I've got silver on the weekly, Dow on the monthly. God. All right. So let's just DXY. I'll, I'll fix this up a little later on. It's a very simple fix, but I can't do it right now. So DXY, the dollar is down, was well, down from the high of the day. It's up six cents at 102.24. I think the dollar is acting weak, but until it breaks, it's uh, until it really starts to close two out of three days below 101, say 93. 100.82 will be the key support that I'm looking at, and that's going to be really important to monitor. It doesn't look like that's correct. It looks like it's, am I right? The low should have been, no, 100.82. Oh, oh, 100, that's what it says, 100.82. So, um, so 101.90, close under that area, that would be your target, and it should get there about Wednesday or so of next week. Uh, now, what we're looking at is TLT. I didn't finish that. I'll have to do it just on this chart. Have I got everything? Oh, I've got the monthly. So this is the one that's failing. Okay, TLT, TLT. There it is. So I just think that at this particular point, yields are in a, in a, a sideways trading band. I don't think they're the issue right now. That's number one. Number two is um, the TLTs. You look at the TLT, you look at the TBT, they're kind of trading places within a range. And that range can stay for a little while. But if the TLT, which is the iShares Treasury Bond ETF, um, if it takes out 2590 as support, it's a, what am I talking about here? There's the TBT. If the TBT takes out 2590, that's going to be a big problem. And that'll say that the TLT, 
is pushing to the upside and taking out 110.30 as, as uh, the resistance. Questions came in. So let me just do this quickly. CTS, I thought I had everything resolved. It isn't. So there's the weekly for Syntas. Syntas is trading at uh, 465.25. And the reason why I make a big deal about this for decades is that Syntas is overall uniforms rentals. It's telling us in no uncertain terms that they are still doing very well. They gapped up and they're holding the gap for the last two days since they gapped up. They, they took out the high yesterday and now they're in the in the top part of the range. This is this is good. So when when um, when you think of the Fed, the Fed's looking at all this data, they kind of stuck. They really are kind of stuck. So my my thinking here is that they they've got to be thinking quarter point. We've got to stick to our our routine because that's what you got to do. But I believe that when all the data start, starts to come out in the next month or two, you'll see that the jobs is starting to come down. Jobs, jobs rates coming down there are less people being employed and um, that's that's going to be where that's really what the Fed wants to look at and inflation if you look at the DBA which is the agriculture this is the DB agricultural fund has been doing really nicely it's at 20.38 so even there it's kind of a mixed message for the Fed I'll be back in a moment for the last segment of the day TFNN has just launched their new trading room the Tiger's Den Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with the Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In the Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs. And join Join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other tigers and tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. So, folks, during the break, I answered a whole bunch of questions in the den. I can't see the, uh, the tiger YouTube. 
Okay, yeah, okay. So, uh, SLJ Jr., this is Silver Jr., A, B, C, D, E. A lot of them are getting to a resistance level, so a lot of the, the gold stocks are just, they've had, the small ones have had fabulous moves. They've had like 30 to 45 or 50% moves, or even more to the upside. But the bigger ones are actually doing very well, but they're not having the same percentage. So I'm looking at this, I'm saying we're getting really close to some kind of, at least a digestive phase in the, in the GDX and the gold stocks themselves. So let me just do this as we're about to wrap up, because you're going to go to Steve Rose's uh, recorded program coming up. And then, of course, great program for the rest of the day, live programming. And Tom wraps it up, and Tommy Jr. starts us off at 9. Great program. Check out my opening call, my daily newsletter. As I say, we're still long. Uh, we've added to the long in the Dow. We've got some other positions that are doing very nicely. So this is what I wanted to say. In the volatility index, and I'm using this only as a clue because, oh, <laughs> I'll get it. Don't worry. I won't, I won't say oh anymore. I'll just do it. Right we are. Uh, VIX dot X. There we are. So in the volatility index, way down in this, this pyramid pattern, we are getting close uh, at 1875. Just in terms of the unbalanced volume, we're getting close to at least a little bit of a rebound. So I'm suspecting that this is what I'm anticipating. The Dow cannot make a peak D until Wednesday. In other words, you can have a, a lower high on Tuesday, on Monday to give a peak C, then a new high on recovery high on Tuesday to, for your D. Wednesday, you pull back. The S&P is exactly the same thing. So on a very short term, I'm still, I'm still looking at this very positively. Most importantly, the fact that you've got the, the estimators having led the move up, they're a little bit weaker today, the oxygen is really important. And I, I like what I'm seeing right now. Have a wonderful weekend. Check out both people. Thank you for great programming. And I will see you Monday.